episode, we are going to cover engraving. Now, with the art of engraving, you may not always see it or notice it, but it is on the inside of your ring. It's where the carrot stamp is placed, and it's also when and how used for engraving for a loved one or a particular occasion. In this episode, we're going to show you the older hand tools where the mark is stamped and the modern equipment where it gives you the choice of being able to engrave any kind of numbers or letters pertaining to dates or the carat weight of, say, your center diamond even. We have the project ring. And what it is, is a ring that I actually alloyed the gold, so I am totally familiar and aware of the gold content. I carved the wax and we cast it. Therefore, I made the ring. By law, I have to stamp the carrot of the gold inside the ring. Now, also, many companies and custom jewelers put their own insignia or logo or trademark inside the ring as well, or any other certain information uh, that they may want to, like the weight of a important gem that may be in there. So in this episode, we're going to use the very fine, high quality, inexpensive piece of equipment to engrave that information. But before me, I have the tools that most jewelers still use where it is hand stamped inside the ring, the particular carrot. Before us, we have the classic uh, jewelers stamps. They're made out of a hardened steel, but even over so much time of use, the edges of the stamp will wear and hence you have to get and purchase another one. They're made, I have some, of course, in every different stamp, but I have before me some that say 0.999 fine if you're stamping a bar pure gold so you know what it is. 10 carat, 14 carat, 18 carat. And they are made to where they have different curvatures and different lengths in between the uh, stamp and the curve so that depending on the width of the ring and the style of the ring, you're able to reach the area that you want to place the stamp. Now, it's not as easy as it may sound because if you don't line it up and strike it just right, in other words, if you ever try to hit the nail with a hammer and you miss, hmm, same thing happens here. Then you get a miss strike. And at that point, you have to go back to the bench and hand sand out the error and start over. So you want to kind of get good with the aim of the uh, hammer to the pin. And I've often had a helper assist me with that matter because in holding it, sometimes you need that her third hand. And I usually make the other person hit the nail, so to speak. And uh, I put a lot of pressure on um, the girls that would work for me in my store, but they never did strike my finger. They were very good at that. But again, if you don't get it just right, you have to start over. Now, the piece of equipment where it's easier to get it right, but there's a lot more knowledge in actually working it is the expensive inside ring engraving machine. Now, let's take you to that. We're going to use the very uh, much more expensive machine than a hand stamp to do the engraving I want on the inside of this custom piece. Now, I handmade the item from scratch, so I'm going to put in what I like to use is my personal um, logo or signature, so to speak, and that is my initials with the year I made the piece in between. So in this case, it is S, going to be S, 18S. We're also going to engrave. 14 carats. Since I already alloyed the gold and know exactly what it is, I don't need to test it like it would be a ring, that, uh, an estate piece uh, that I would do. So what we have is a machine that you can adjust and we're going to insert it in here and we're going to turn the wheel until these close in on the piece. And okay, I see that because of the thickness, this is perfect because it demonstrates the versatility 
is because the width of the bottom of the shank, we, this is also why it's so expensive because of these fine mechanical adjustments that can be made for the different thicknesses of the ring. So you see the little blue and the red, we're going to switch this over to the blue side, which is a wider opening. All right, now we're going to go back and turn the wheel and let the clamps close in on the piece, making sure that we center it. And then once it's in there, we're going to tighten this down over what would be the center stone. This locks it in in all four places, assuring us that it's not going to move during the engraving and will allow for the engraving to be as straight as possible. All right, so once we have it in the machine tightened up, then we have our plate of the different numbers. Now, we're going to start off with the 14 carat and I'm going to locate it I think right up on the side, exactly pretty much about where it is. I'm going to move it down just a little. All right, so we have the number one. Here we put our stylus into the one. Now, our engraver that you see up here will follow the exact pattern once I press the lever down, bringing the piece up to the carbon steel point, which will cut the number in with uh, any luck. All right, so here we go. We're going to create a 14. So we put it in the one. We trace the one that is on the plate. When we're done, we drop it. We can look and see if we have done that correctly. And it appears so. We pick this up, move it to the four. It will space it the correct distance automatically. And we trace the four. I usually go over it a couple times. We have our four. And now we're just going to put a K. In the olden days, the hand engravers could do this and were amazing at the level of talent that takes. I uh, have tried some of it, and it is not something I have mastered. So we have our 14 carat. It is inside. It is placed correctly. Now let's go and to the other side of the ring, and we can raise that, spin it quickly. We take it out of the area that, if it was sized, it would ever be uh, affected so that way a jeweler doesn't have to worry about affecting my um, hand logo so to speak all right so it's a quick and simple process if all goes well and it's tightened up we check the tightness again sometimes it loosens a little let's do the s18s now 18 is for the year and these pieces are very limited. If you can ever ever get an opportunity to get a uh, SS piece, so to speak, I would recommend it. All right, S is done. If there is a mistake, the piece has to be filed and sanded out and gone back over and that does occur the piece can shift or i can be um <laughs> kind of uh not all together and forget the correct <laughs> letter or number i'm doing next or not space it the same so many things can go wrong all right this should be the last letter And with any luck, we have what we're looking for, S18S. And then the 14 carat, 
on the other side. And now we are good to go for the legal and parts and the custom parts of adding what is necessary when you do a custom ring. The carrot stamp, always the most important thing. And then by choice, if you want to add your logo or factory trademark, that is done as well. Now, in this episode, you are able to see how a ring can be stamped or you can use the fancier equipment to do any other of the choices you may want for inside ring engraving. And with that process completed, that is the final step in a custom ring done right. Thank you for joining me in this episode and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.